monster lived a big and wonderfully clever pig. To everybody, it was plain that Piggy had a massive brain. He worked out sums inside his head. There was the crocodile. No animal is half so vile as Crocky Walk the crocodile. On Saturdays, he likes to crunch six juicy children for his lunch. And he especially enjoys just three of each. Three girls, three boys. He smears the boys to make them hot with mustard from the mustard pot. But mustard doesn't go with girls. It tastes so wrong with plaits and curls. With them, what goes extremely well is butterscotch and caramel. It's such a super marvelous treat when boys are hot and girls are sweet. At least that's Crocky's point of view. He ought to know he's had a few. That's down in the valley, there were three farms. The owners of these farms had done well. At six o'clock in the evening, Bean switched off the motor of his tractor and climbed down from the driver's seat. Bunce did the same. Both men had had enough. They were tired and stiff from driving the tractors all day. They were also hungry. Slowly, they walked over to the small box's hole in the bottom of the huge crater. Bean's face was purple with rage. Bunce was cursing the fox with dirty words that cannot be mentioned. Boggish came waddling up. Dang and blast that filthy, stinking fox, he said. What the heck do we do now? I'll tell you what we don't do, Bean said. We don't let him go. We'll never let him go, Bunce declared. He took out the cork and tipped it all down the sink. He then filled the bottle with his own magic mixture by dipping a small jug into the saucepan and using it as a pourer. He replaced them. They went to the pigsty first. George gave a spoonful of medicine to the pig. The pig blew smoke from its nose and they went to the herd of fine black bullocks that Mr. Cranky was trying to fatten for the market. George gave each of them some medicine. The next day, George's father came down to breakfast in a state of greater excitement than ever. I've been awake all night thinking about it, he cried. About what, Dad? George asked him. About your marvellous medicine, of course. We can't stop now, my boy. We must start making more of it at once, more and more and more. The giant saucepan had been completely emptied the day before because there had been so many sheep and pigs and cows and bullocks to be dosed. But why do we need more, Dad? George asked. We've done all our own animals, and we've made Grandma feel as frisky as a ferret, even though she does have to sleep in the barn. One, one, here comes Charlie. There are four very old people in this story. As soon as everyone was safely in, the Oompa Loompas pushed the boat away from the bank and began to row swiftly down river. Now over here... Mr. Wonka went on, skipping excitedly across the room to the opposite wall. Over here, I'm inventing a completely new line in toffees. He stopped beside a large saucepan. The saucepan was full of thick, gooey, purplish treacle, 